this is it was so important because I like I will affect his sentencing I God, all the jobs I couldn't get any of them even though I had two degrees because when you googled my name all that came up was maybe on camera okay let's talk about wow how is it already this dark I went into the police station at 4 and it's now dark hold please not the best lighting and I do look a little bald also I my hair is way too bleached right here. It actually looks like I'm receding. Let's talk. Once that loud ass vehicle. Speaking of PTSD, which I haven't spoken about yet, but. Okay, maybe the Target parking garage is not the place to do this. However, I need to get cat litter and I didn't want to film this outside the police station because there were some interesting characters there. First, waving. I'll lock my car really quick. I fear this might have been the worst place. Um, so I was at the police station for so long. First I was waiting and then when I was talking to people, they would leave and come back and leave and come back. And while that was happening, I was like, you know what? Let me make some notes of things that I want to talk about. So if you see me looking at my phone, as if this is like some formal, no. But I have things that I want to say, okay? So the other night morning, it was like two, almost 3 a.m. I posted a story and while I was fucking in shock saying that everything had just been stolen from me. That's true, my, my Airbnb had told me that I had a garage parking spot, but upon arriving to like the lockbox, there's supposed to be a key fob and a garage remote and there's only a key fob so like to get into the building. So I was like, well shit. And this Airbnb was in Koreatown. I've since moved, which by the way, I actually, I love Koreatown, okay? Y'all know I've been learning Korean and my dad spent time there before I was born. Oh, great. Anyway, I've been eating kimchi and speaking like limited Korean since birth. Not that it matters. I just wanted to say like, no hate to Koreatown. I love it. However, it's not the best place to be outside as a very small woman at 2 a.m. is what I'm trying to say. I had just driven eight hours from Scottsdale. I had planned on having like a safe underground garage space to unload all of my shit. I came to LA only for four days for work and two of those days are now like gone and also the rest of it's gonna be really hard because everything was stolen. Anywho, anyway, point is I only came here for a few days and then I'm gonna be leaving and going to, well, another Airbnb somewhere else, but then a more permanent residence very soon because um, just as a little background context to all of this, cause I guess it is kind of relevant if you're watching this knowing nothing. For about three months since I moved out of my apartment in West Hollywood, I've had the majority of my belongings in a giant storage unit like a 30 by 30 bitch haven't been to it since i put my shit in it however it was broken into so there's that and the story behind doing that is something that i'll maybe touch on a little bit later but aside from that reason another part of the reason was that i just didn't know where i wanted to move i've been in la for seven years now or i had been in la for seven years at that point i was 21 when i moved here but more importantly a lot was happening at the time that my lease was expiring that contributed to me needing to put my stuff in storage and uh, escape, okay? I stayed at a few Airbnbs um, in California, not in LA, but Southern California. And then, if you've been following me, you've probably fucking seen, I spent two months in Arizona. The first month I spent at a house that I'm renting. I had planned on leaving Arizona, so then that house is being rented out again, so I was like, well, well, but then I decided to stay in Arizona for another two weeks, basically. So then I stayed in two different Airbnbs there, blah, blah, blah. Um, I've been living with all of the same things ever and everything that fits in my car, which it barely fits in my car. And there have been some good men that got left behind at various Airbnbs because it just they just didn't fit in my car. Like shout out to my Razor scooter that I never got to use, rip. In fact, you can ask any of the men that helped me load and unload um, all of my stuff and they will confirm that I have had a ridiculous amount of shit like squeezed in my fucking Tesla Like we are airtight. We had the frunk. 
we had I had all my seats down we had it just it was a lot which is crazy because like I said like all of my stuff's in storage but I knew it was gonna be whatever you get the point this actually is relevant to what I'm gonna be speaking about so that's fine actually after I moved out when I was in California I was doing it by myself because I was dumb <laughs> kind of not really i mean i actually really enjoyed staying at three different airbnbs like for a week at a time but it was dumb because i was like i'm gonna move into all these places i'm gonna unload all my stuff i did that loading and unloading thing what i guess eight times for those three weeks and i did that all by myself and it would take two hours usually like checking out of the airbnb would take the longest in arizona i, I actually had helpers and finally on my last move <laughs> go figure literally two days ago i thought hey let me fucking actually just go on amazon and order like a wagon situation like one of those like big fabric you know what i'm talking about that'll probably make this whole loading and unloading thing a lot easier i did that and again the wagon hi you may notice i look different because it's a different fucking day because let me just show you again the wagon is relevant <laughs> So that happened, it didn't export properly. I was like, fuck. I had already deleted all of the videos because I was like, it exported, I have it, I need to get rid of the space because I'm working with my old laptop that has no fucking space on it. So if I had my laptop that was stolen, this wouldn't have happened. Then I proceeded to pay $400 to try and recover the footage because I had already filmed it, which was an hour and a half, and edited it, which I don't know how long, but a long time, and also didn't want to have to retell the story. Still really don't want to have to retell this story and re-edit it again, but I've spent the past two days, so, like I, I have tried everything to recover this fucking footage and it is nowhere. Disc drill has failed me. It's like, it's recovering videos from like 2018, really random ones. I think because they were so long, like they never fully synced to, not that they were in, I, I, I don't fucking know. I'm gonna pick back up where I left off. I'm gonna do this horizontally this time because clearly I know that this is not an Instagram story. No, 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 this is a YouTube video. Um, and I'm gonna try and be faster than I was before. I want to cry. On the bright side, even though I had deleted like the note that I made, I hadn't deleted it from my recently deleted. This isn't one of those things where like I lose footage and then I'm like, Ugh, this fucking sucks. I try to get it back. I can't and I'm like, whatever. No, I want to refilm this because it's important. I don't want to refilm it, but I want this video to exist, so. What are you gonna do? I've gone through one paragraph in my notes, that's how. <sighs> I also feel like it's gonna be a lot less, like it might come off more cold because it's now been a week. I, I don't know, I don't know. So I left off frozen for 40 minutes like this, talking about my wagon, which the wagon is relevant, I promise. I should have brought a Bevrangino because my mouth is dry. Okay, so Monday night, or Tuesday morning rather, when I got to my Airbnb, it was around 2 a.m. I learned that I have no garage access to the spot in the underground garage that I supposedly had. According to, you know, the Airbnb listing and the messaging, whatever, there's a lockbox that you go to to get- Did I already talk about this? I did, cool, sick. So I learned that I can't get in the garage, and if you know anything about Koreatown, you know that if you don't have a parking space, you are basically gonna be parking, um, I'm not, like this is not an exaggeration, like a mile away or more and walking to where you're staying, where you're living, whatever. And especially late at night or 2 a.m. when everyone's already home, they've already been home, they've already taken up all the street parking. This is a very nice apartment complex. In fact, I didn't even know this existed. Not that I've ever lived in Koreatown, but like, my sister lived in Silver Lake, which was kind of nearby, whatever. As far as I've seen it, this is like the nicest apartment complex in Koreatown, which it did end up being super nice inside, whatever. So I don't have a garage space. I park right in front of the building, actually like blocking the garage because it's it was super well lit in front of the building because you need like the fob to enter. It's all lit up. Put my car right there, which like also blocks the garage, but I'm like, no one's probably coming in the garage. And if they are, I'm gonna follow them. And I put my hazards on. First item of business is I take Bug and her litter box inside. That's the first thing I do. Like anytime I get to a new Airbnb, it's very overwhelming because I'm like, I know I have so much to unload. But the first thing that I will always do, is, duh, take Bug, put her in her backpack, take her litter box, figure out how to get inside, put her inside with her litter box and some treats and then leave to go unload and whatever. Take her in, go to the fourth floor where I'm staying. It's very nice. I'm like, 
I am impressed. I am very impressed. I come back outside. I decide to unload my two suitcases, mostly because they were like at the back of my truck. So I pulled those out. I put those inside the lobby. <laughs> look honestly i guess it's good that i did that because those were the only two men left standing um in those suitcases was just sweatpants sweatshirts big t-shirts a couple pairs of jean shorts and a couple crop tops quite possibly the least important things that i had in my car but like those made it into the lobby that's great you know i could put sweatpants on after this whole debacle but honestly those could have been taken too and i would feel no differently about this situation which I will get into. Go back to my car, it's only like a few feet away, and I fill my wagon full of all my shit. I am stacking, like I had these like bins that I've been putting like skincare, hair care, probably seven different, no, probably more than that, backpacks, tote bags, weekenders, duffel bags, whatever. Like I have a couple for tech stuff. I'm like trying to think in my brain of all of the things. There was a skincare thing, there was a hair care thing, there was all my jewelry there was laptop actually my ipad i i'm just now realizing i didn't i literally didn't even think about that i don't really use my ipad i'm just realizing that that and i didn't have find my on that okay anyway i'm getting ahead of myself but i'm packing my life in this wagon taking everything out of my car putting it in the wagon as one does it was stacked and at the bottom of it was my laptop my laptop case where i had like my external hard drive mounted to the outside of my laptop um a few memory cards in my laptop case i don't know what else i feel like i had some other things oh in my laptop case was a ticket that i got when i was in arizona for speeding and i've been trying to figure out how the fuck to pay that but there are so many different counties and when you're in like an indian reservation it's basically impossible to figure that out so like i may have a warrant out because i have i cannot fucking figure out there is no way to figure out how to pay a ticket that you get whatever moving along the laptop was on the bottom of the wagon it had been sitting on my passenger side because whenever i would stop to charge my car i would work on it and then the other thing i had up here just because i was like worried about them maybe getting too hot was not all of my tech stuff but cube thing that had my three cameras in it my nice cameras i had a canon eos m50 a canon g7x mark iii and a sony a6400 question mark and a lens for that one and their chargers i just had those in my laptop up here point is like i put all of that in the wagon at the bottom because it was right next to me and also, I mean, I'm gonna be putting stuff on top of it. Kind of just made the most sense. Oh my god, I'm realizing for t for some reason I was putting like papers in my laptop case. I think like to remind me to go online and pay certain things whenever I had my laptop. And there was an ambulance bill that was in there also. Again, like that shit really doesn't matter. None of the shit really matters except for the laptop, which I'm getting to. It's gonna be dark though. Okay, so now my wagon's full the only three things that i opted to leave in my car a vacuum that i bought when i was in arizona a backpack full of books lastly is it, it's in here master's degree <laughs> because <laughs> very random i know but it had just been sent to me whilst in arizona and um it was like at the very front it just wasn't whatever i didn't put that in the wagon okay it probably it would wouldn't have it just wasn't important so those were the three things and then also whatever the fuck is in my frunk i think it's just like a wi-fi router and a modem it's probably fucking ruined because of being in arizona and that he put my wi-fi like on pause and i was gonna like it's probably just melted plastic up there at this point but i don't know i've opened the frunk one time and one time only i just don't that the word frunk the idea of it i don't like any of it i just i prefer not to Bodily. so literally all of the least important things but that also was for a reason because there was a lot of things that I put in my wagon that I knew I wasn't going to need for a four day stay in LA. I probably could have consolidated the things I would need like in one bag minus like all my groceries. That is because I knew I now had to park my car somewhere on the fucking street somewhere. And despite my literal blackout tinting that I have on this car now, and I've never had this car broken into, but three or four times in my last car, I had it broken into and three 
of those it was four times because three times i had windows broken one time don't fucking remember what happened i don't remember what I, it was like someone had a similar key fob i don't know i don't know doesn't matter point is i have learned my lesson not to leave important shit in your car because all of those times for whatever fucking reason my car was packed full of stuff and you know what i used to leave stuff in my car like important stuff back then i had like a studio apartment or one bedroom apartment and like couldn't fit a lot of things and so, but also i would do this thing where like i was gonna donate things and so i'd put it all in my trunk and then like not donate it for a month or whatever and it would just be in there so one of the times i got all my donations stolen and then like whatever else i had in here like i remember i remember being really upset because i was not making a lot of money i had like my camera my beats headphones it, like everything stolen out of the inside of my car i'm sure i made a video about it because that was probably like in 2017 and then three more times car broken into the most recent time which was the, the thing that happened like a month before i bought the tesla because i was like fuck this was when i was at equinox and you would think they would have see none of this i said i said none of this in the video that i filmed earlier but that's the problem with having adhd and it's just <laughs> you don't need this much background information but i'm giving it to you they broke my window they reached in stole my only at the time designer bag my louis vuitton bag and everything inside of it which was what <sighs> shattered my window like it was, that was such a fucked up thing and then also like my apartment insurance didn't cover it point is i learned my lesson like don't leave important things in your car at all period but especially if you're parking on the street and especially if you're in a place like koreatown point is everything was in that damn wagon and i thought i'm being so proactive right now okay if my car gets broken into what i'm at a vacuum and books and a copy of my degree that i could no. Oh, and I wrote in this note that point is that everything was in that wagon. Uh, and I wrote, I just left the police station actually, which I don't know if I said in the first five minutes of this video, but I had just left the police station after like several hours. And um, I had to itemize everything, which I had already kind of started making a list. And I already, I also just like don't even know how to do that because there was so much. Like you expect me to know every skincare product, every like, I just did like what I was able to remember, like the big things. I kind of was able to be like, uh, skincare worth this much, makeup worth this much, hair products worth this much, jewelry worth this much, whatever. But with doing that, even knowing that like I left things out, like I had a bunch of shoes in like a laundry basket. Like I put all my shoes in a laundry basket. Bitch, I'm be living in these. Um, but based on that, and when I had to itemize everything, the total theft was about $65,000. What was that smile? I don't know. A big part of it was jewelry. This is what fucks me up too. The night before I drove, I had drank. And another thing is just in general, actually in Arizona, I wasn't really wearing my rings because it's so hot there and I was just swollen the whole time. At any given moment, my ring would just be like super tight. So I have these rings, which you might be like, that's a lot, wow. But normally I would wear a lot more. <laughs> and I have like rings that I don't wear every day, whatever. Couple Cartier. Um, the jewelry made up a big chunk of, of that amount. Um, I even had an unopened, my, my voice is going, I can feel it and I can hear it. Unopened package from Revolve that I had, oh no. I'm gonna have to stop because my voice is literally going away. An open package from Revolve in there because it arrived like the day that, you know, I was leaving. While I was in the police station, like, waiting in between talking to them and I'm like making a list of things, I'm like, let me go to my email, look at all of the items that I had selected and then go see how much they actually would be if I were to purchase them because the thing is even if you get gifted things like you're you're still to pay taxes on them it's, it's a whole thing anyway but the package from revolve was forty two hundred dollars so yeah okay so I'll stop there with that uh because that's the part where it's like it's not great you know it's not fun that I had my things taken and I'm not in a place where I can replace those things nor would I really know how to, to be honest. But I swear on my goddamn life and everything that I love, I swear, here's, I swear on my niece's lives. And I only pull that one out when it is very serious because those are the three best humans that are on this planet. And I only pull that one out when it is something very important that I would like to get the point across that I swear on. I mean, fuck my own life. I swear on my niece's lives, you know? If all of those things had been taken, which they were, if they had all been taken aside from my MacBook, 
which I will get into later, but it was a Christmas present this last year. It was an expensive MacBook, but honestly, it was probably cheaper than the Revolve package. So it's, it's not like I'm like, oh my God, that laptop was so expensive. I digress. If if my MacBook was still with me, and I can't, I, there's no point in thinking this, but I'm like, why didn't I just take that in with me when I had Bug and her litter box? And it's like, well, probably because I was using two hands with the litter. But like, I can't think that way because who fucking, there's no point. But I swear on my niece's lives. If that was all taken aside from my MacBook, I would not have spiraled the way that it did. I would have, don't get me wrong. I would have been very upset and very frustrated and probably frantic in that moment. I was gonna say to a normal level, but honestly not even to a normal level. We'll get there in a minute, but like to put it into perspective, something that, some I just got goosebumps all over my arms and on my face, oh my gosh. I only get goosebumps on my face in like two scenarios. That's very weird. I don't really know what that means. Um, But to put it into like perspective, it, <laughs> I realized I haven't even talked about it being stolen yet, but clearly it was stolen. There were three things that I thought about. My laptop, the hard drive. We are not, nope, 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 nope. We are not crying, no, no, no. I haven't cried since the night that this happened and I don't want or need to cry right now. Um, the third thing was a little custom urn with the ashes of my stillborn daughter. Um, um, and despite like the gravity of that realization, I still wouldn't have spiraled in the way that I did over my laptop. And that might sound crazy, but hopefully by the end of this, you'll understand why. Um, in fact, if you know anything about me, if you followed me for any amount of time if you hung out with me so for some people it just takes one time you know but at least by the third hangout you know that a lot of weird i don't want to say bad but just like bad good weird outrageous you can't make this shit up type of things happen to me no matter what like normally i am laughing at these bad things i talk about how i i view my life as a tv show and no matter what happens i look at it as if like damn this is gonna be a really fucking good episode, you know? The people will love this. The ratings, okay? The season renewal. And I mean this like so wholeheartedly. And a friend even recently, he started laughing and he was like, I don't, how did you come up with this coping mechanism of like looking at your life as if it were a TV show? And I'm like, I don't even think I consciously developed it, but I will say that for as long as I've been thinking this way, which I don't really know how long it is, it has been maybe like four or five years and then even more so in the last couple of years having this outlook on life and just interpretation of events that happen has truly made my life so much more peaceful or at least it, it has allowed me to feel more peaceful and it has allowed me to be a very non-reactive person i mean i'm never reactive outwardly but it's even like inwardly it has aided in like my emotional regulation yeah just like non-reactive not irrational and if there is like an irrational feeling or emotion because that's kind of hard to just like stop i'm able to like quickly just it just automatically happens where i'm, I'm looking at my life like a tv show yeah it just allows for you know emotional constancy object constancy contributes to regulating my emotions and like that's not to say that i don't feel things i mean i do clearly i do but I deal with my feelings in a healthy way and I transmute my emotions and moving right along because I've been talking too long about this and the sun is setting. After that tangent, I'll end with this and then I will come back and continue this tomorrow. So the wagon, why does the wagon matter? So this apartment complex has, let me actually just refresh your memory on what I just said. I put the two suitcases in the lobby and I came back to my car, which is still right in front with the hazards on. This apartment complex has a long flight of stairs up to the entrance of the building that leads to the lobby. So when I had my suitcases, I was like, I'm just gonna run up there, put them in there, whatever. Didn't really think about it. I assumed as one does and one would that there would be either a ramp or like an accessibility 
uh, elevator or even like a service elevator to get into the building so that, you know, I can pull my wagon either up the ramp or in the ele and put it in the elevator and then bring it into, I mean, at least the lobby, but probably even up into my unit because it's just like a go to the elevator, go up, put it in um, and then run back to my car and go find street parking. You know, I was mistaken. There was no ramp. There was nothing. Um, so I'm standing there and I'm like, I have a fat wagon and I'm not just talking about my ass, okay? I have a fat fucking wagon that is about to topple over just like by rolling, let alone adding a staircase incline. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm not pulling the wagon up the stairs, but that's for sure. And I've already been yelled at by a man that like probably didn't even live in the building. Anyway, telling me that like I needed to move my car. He wasn't trying to get in the garage. He was just like a random man, whatever. I was feeling pressured, okay? And um, it's like 2 a.m., past 2 a.m. at this point. And I'm trying to be very quick with all this. I was very quick with all this, okay? So my life is in this wagon and there's nowhere that I can move my car. Literally, there's nowhere that I can move my car so that it's not in the middle of the fucking street because there's street parking on both sides. They're narrow roads. You can get one car through. I can't do that. So like the way that I pulled was like in front of the garage because otherwise I'm just in the middle of the street. You know what I mean? There are no driveways. Like I'm telling you this building with the garage, it might've been the only building with the garage on the entire street, at least as far as I could tell. Very random, like nice building in the midst of not whatever. There were not even red zones, let alone like a loading zone, like nothing, nah thing no gaps as far as the eye can see okay i'm like nope i gotta go fucking find street parking and it's really getting dark so let me just quickly tell you where i left my wagon and then we'll pick this back up i roll it right in front of number one a sign a few signs that say like smile you're on camera and number two there's the staircase like i said it's all cement and so like from the side of the staircase, it just looks like cement. Do you know what I mean? And then if you're looking straight at it, it's like a staircase, whatever. So I moved my wagon to, there's like a one to two foot space right in front of the stairs, but it's still covered by like that cement. Doesn't matter. It's right in front of like the first step. But if you're coming from the sides, you can't see my wagon because it's hidden by the cement staircase. The only way you can see the wagon is if you're looking at the building. I also opted to put my two blankets on top of everything just so that, I don't know, it looked like a wagon full of just like potentially fucking trash. Like it's just like no nothing important. I don't know. I It also like just made the most sense to me to do that. Okay. And that's where I will leave you for now because it's getting dark, but you'll see me in two seconds. Okay. Quickly picking up where we left off yesterday because it's like the same time. The next day the sun's about to set and I've been busy all day. So let's get back into it, I get in my car, I'm zooming around all of the fucking surrounding blocks. And like, when I tell you there was no street parking anywhere and at least like, I don't know, a 0.5 mile radius. I mean, I wanna say more, but honestly, who knows? I'm not kidding. But so almost 10 minutes have passed. I put bug bite in the back of my head. And at one point, as I was driving around, I had driven past the building again and I glanced over to make sure my wagon was still there. Okay, and it was. Still, I could not find anything. So instead, I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna illegally park in this red zone that it's not like the red zone was close to the building either. It was like 0.4 miles away. This, the literally the nearest red zone. So I parked there. It's like 2.15 a.m. And I'm like, I'm, I'll be fine for, you know, 30 minutes or, you know, however long it takes to unload my stuff into the lobby and then proceed to run back and move my car probably two fucking miles away because I still hadn't find, found street parking and then run back to the building with my taser. I always have her, okay. So I park in this red zone. I power walk my ass back. I'm also wearing, because I had just come from Arizona where it was 117 degrees. I'm wearing, it doesn't really matter. There's some at the she's yelling at me, Korean cat calling me, which like, bitch, I speak mediocre Korean now. So I didn't appreciate that, but I digress, not really relevant. Anyway, I turned the corner of the street that the building is on. I approached the building. As I'm approaching the building and starting to see the staircase, my heart, intestines, liver, eyeballs, uvula sink to my asshole. As I see the space where my cart was just parked is now empty. 
So I start just like running around because it had probably been four minutes since I had driven by. Like I said, I like passed by and glanced over to make sure that the wagon was there. It probably, been, well, maybe longer than four minutes considering I had to power walk back, but still not a long time. So I'm like, there's no way that like anyone that had taken my wagon could be that fucking far away. So I start like running around the surrounding area, not safe, but like at this point, I'm just like, my stuff is gone. I gotta find it. Like not quite realizing yet, like what was in the cart, just like holy shit, all my stuff was just gone. Running around, a man comes, okay, so this is kind of weird, might be relevant, might not be. A man comes out of like a nearby building and he's got a cigarette and AirPods in and I'm trying to fucking approach him. He's like ignoring the fuck out of me. I have to get like so close to him. I'm like, okay, I know like AirPods are noise canceling, but there's no way you're not hearing me be like, sir, excuse me, sir, hello. Doing the fucking YMCA, jumping jacks, like right in his peripheral. I get his attention, you know, explain to him, ask if he has seen anything. And he's like, no, sorry, I just walked out here. Which weird because I remember when I had first gotten to the apartment building and I'm pulling up cause I had to go to this lockbox and get my shit out. I had seen this same guy standing right there. He was like 10 feet from, maybe less, 10 feet from the lock boxes, standing there like smoking. I guess at some point he went back in and then as I'm like frantically running around, he comes out of the building. It, it's a separate building by the way. It's like some weird back door, I don't know. But it, I don't think it was to the apartment complex. And he comes back out so I ask him and he's like, no, I just came out here. And I remember thinking like, bitch, I saw you like right when I got here, whatever. Could be nothing, could be the one that has all my shit. We'll never know. So I am torn between, you know, continuing to run up and down the streets of Koreatown, but also knowing like it's not safe and fucking 95 pound young girl. Okay, I'm 29 years old, but you can imagine in the dark without makeup, I did look like kind of like a teenager. I, I was just so panicked. So I go back to the building. I sit on the steps and I just am like thinking of what to do. So I'm just sitting there and like, this is the when the realization hit me of like the laptop, the ashes, like the hard drive, like this, this is when that'll hit me. I'm sitting there for a couple minutes and then this Uber pulls into the driveway and is dropping off a girl that lives in the building. So as she's like walking past me to go up the stairs, I ask her if she lives in the building because I know that there's a lot of other like Airbnb units in this building, but there's also some residents. Anyway, like asking her if she lives in this building to which I realize she only speaks Korean, really doesn't know English. This is where we find out that my Korean is not as stellar as I may have previously made it seem. I mean, I did say mediocre, but still. When she's like, no English, like doesn't understand, I'm like, this is a skill that's gonna really come in handy right now, okay? She's gonna help me. So I'm able to ask her in Korean if she lives there, and she says yes which is great, 10 out of 10. I'm an advanced Korean speaker, you know? Okay, so I then proceed to try and ask if she has like the number of the manager, the landlord, the, you know, the property manager, whoever the fuck owns the building or works in the office so that I can get the CCTV footage because like I said, I put all my shit right in front of a sign that's like smile, you're on camera and like I see the cameras, whatever. So I am asking her in Korean if I can get the number of the building manager or someone. I do think <laughs> she like motions for my phone so that she can put it in. Uh, I do actually believe that she gave me her number Later, I looked at it and it like had auto filled with her like photo and I was like, that's the girl that I saw. <laughs> so, you know, I got a Korean girl's number, which maybe I'll marry her one day and it'll be worth it. But I'm gonna keep on doing those lessons, what I learned from that. And then I did actually end up meeting the managers the next day. At some point the next day, I'm like making food. I'm like opening drawers, looking for, you know, utensils and I find the fucking garage clicker and I'm like, sick so i go down to my car and bring it back to the garage and that's when like this couple this older couple was getting out of their car and they were asking me if i was airbnb blah blah, blah. i'm like do you happen to like know the owner and they were like we are the owner and i was like can i come and see the cctv footage and they were like come back tomorrow long story short at the time that i was i filmed this video the first time i was like i'm gonna go back tomorrow and see but i was never able like the office was always closed so I mean, it's been, I don't know, what, a week now? Almost a week since I was at the police station. I haven't gotten a call from a detective yet. And so like, 
who knows how long they keep their fucking footage for. I've tried, whatever. Ba back to the, back to that night. Um, I give up. I'm fucking exhausted and my body, I start to feel like I'm about to have a panic attack. I go inside, move my two suitcases, roll them into the elevator up to my unit. I got sweatpants and sweatshirts and a couple of shirts, you know? And, you know, very, like I said, very nice building. Really wish I uh, would have arrived during the daytime. I don't know if I already said this, but my dumbass was too sleep deprived to check out on my Airbnb in the morning and just drive straight back because I went out the night before and I ended up going to Courtney's house, my best friend, to try and rest and nap and then drive back it should be like a six and a half hour drive and with a tesla like you will probably have to stop and charge one and a half times so like a full charge and then like another half charge but i had to charge my car four times because my battery is like i guess fucked after you know tesla boob sweat gate trapped in my car gate 2k24 may 2k24 if you know you know i had to stop at four different chargers to charge my car and when i got to the apartment i had two miles left i also knew like i can't i cannot drive around a lot and try to find parking and then like also the next day i do not know <laughs> i got i got lucky once okay i the closest supercharger was four miles away and i tried to drive slowly there and ended up being actually a hotel where you had to like valet and they would go charge it for you and you had to like pay but I was like, as long as my car didn't break down, you know? So even though I left later, it should have been like a 10 p.m. arrival instead of 2 a.m. So I get inside. I'm then also realizing like all of my groceries are gone and also all my medication, which isn't a lot, but like the emergency meds that I have for technically, like I could take them if I have, if I'm like feeling a panic attack, I don't really have to do that. Um, but what they are useful for is like, if I feel and I'm able to catch uh, some sort of PTSD episode, like a flashback coming on, or it was helpful like when I was like in a relationship, if my partner was there, sometimes like I would already be like fading and like I would not be really reachable and they would like find my meds and give them to me. So there's that. So those are gone. My fucking seizure medication that I have taken every day since I was like four or five months old when I had my first seizure, that's taken. So that did not help my situation. Luckily I was able to get that like the next day, but so I don't even have water. Okay. In fact, it's weird. All the Airbnbs I've been staying at have had like spices and like some of them even had like stocked pantries but this particular airbnb did not have even water not even like a brita filter in fact the only thing that this fucking airbnb had was number one svedka two full bottles of svedka in the freezer number two k cups number three sugar cubes a box of what is that brand just like that pink whatever a box of sugar cubes and number four garlic powder Tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to do with those ingredients, okay? No. So, I ate probably 40, 30 to 40 sugar cubes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> and I drank fucking Svedka, which did it hydrate me? No. But like, I, first of all, not the worst idea when I'm like trying to cope in this situation, okay? I'm not a vodka drinker either. Sugar cubes and Svedka is crazy. But <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not drinking LA tap water, okay? At the time I was still like getting over the sickness that I had because this motherfucking man gave me, I don't know if it was COVID or just a really bad flu like a week prior. You know, I have enough problems at the moment and like my immunocompromised ass does not need fucking arsenic poisoning from tap water, okay? So Svedka it was. Okay, so the laptop, okay? Why did the realization that it was taken actually, and I'm using this word in the proper fucking way, okay? Why did it trigger me into a full PTSD flashback followed by maybe the most intense dissociation I've ever experienced or at least like drawn out for the longest time, I don't know. To the point, like I remember my first story post on Instagram where it was a video of me talking and explaining what just happened and I was like visibly upset. I remember doing that, but I have no fucking memory, no recollection of posting the next I guess two slides that may have just been like a black screen with text may have been like a photo with text like I said don't know actually did I say that I'm trying to remember like what I said in the first video versus basically I went back to see like what the, what the fuck did I post because I had actually deactivated all my social media at some point during that dissociation and I guess I had also deleted my posts so they weren't in my archive don't know if I already mentioned that in this video so something you need to understand if you don't have either number one like the first hand experience or number two 
like the knowledge of the condition of PTSD, whether by experiencing it like secondhand or, you know, you studied it and everything. So, you know, if you don't have either of those things, you, something you need to understand is that like in that moment, I was not there at all. I, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. The laptop, that laptop had for lack of a better way to put it, my entire fucking world on it. Actually, that's not even accurate. That's actually not correct. Um, that laptop had my justice, my chance to get goosebumps, a chance to get uh, restitution for being sex trafficked when I was 21. And this is this fucking thing that I didn't want to talk about again. That laptop had years of work, so time consuming, and m more importantly, like energy draining and so much wear and tear on just my mental health. So there's like a few aspects of it. One, I've been making a video or videos, documentary, what I, several videos on the girls do porn sex trafficking. And you know, the incident itself, the aftermath, the destruction, the eventual five years later, incarceration of the criminals, um, and just the ongoing court hearings and sentencings that I attend. And there's supposed to be one this is something that's actually a new update from the last, from the original video that got lost. I was saying on July 25th or 26th, whatever, I was supposed to have a sentencing in San Diego for one of the people involved. I just found out yesterday it got moved to September, which like, I don't even know what, actually that's not a good thing. Like on, on one hand, it's like, oh, that gives me more time. But no, this, this initial date was in January and then it had already been pushed like they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing his hearing and his sentencing and it's just this whole thing but whatever um and that's just one of the people involved so you know I've been working on putting something together the court dates where I I have to look each of those fucking disgusting excuses for human beings in the eyes and read my victim impact statement as if they give a fuck and hand a a hundred something page pages uh you know to the judge containing receipts to claim damages for restitution that ultimately i have yet to be granted because of reasons that i'll get into like when the video eventually comes out but that's the thing like i had an external hard drive stolen as well my backup of that video the backup of all of the documents photos, videos, communication, hospital bills, six years of constant and ongoing monthly lawyer fees to get things taken offline, psychiatric bills, EMDR bills, all the jobs I tried to get in 2017, 2018, but couldn't get any of them, even though I had two degrees because when you Googled my name, all that came up was me being raped on camera. So lost wages, I could go on for so long, like that's why there were so many fucking pages. And that's just like monetary, like this thing fucked up so many aspects of my life. Um, yeah, anyway, I can go on with that. And my FBI like victim advocate has been amazing, but even she told me like early on that I need to make sure and keep everything, even though like at various points I've printed off things and given them to her to give to the judge for various hearings and sentencings because like that's the thing there are multiple people involved and so there's multiple court dates first of all they're all locked up the most dangerous people i just realized that there has been another update since i made my last video but anyway it's crazy because it's like we're not done despite i was one of the last people that this happened to um, in 2017. I believe 2018 is when they were shut down. December 2022 is when they caught Michael Pratt. He was on the FBI's most wanted list. Very satisfying to watch that video of them detaining him. We're losing the point here. I'll, I'll save this for when I have it in me to, you know, try and replicate what I did over the last several years. But also, f fun fact, we weren't allowed to refer to it as sex trafficking <laughs> until, I want to say, 2023, end of 2022 and early 2023. And instead we had to refer to it as the girls do porn business model. And that's like, I'm speaking in court. Outside of that, we weren't even allowed to talk about it until some point, I can't remember when, some point in 2022, we weren't allowed to publicly speak about it. I feel like I'd talk about this later. 
I don't know guys, I'm like, I can't remember what I, like, because I filmed this and then I edited it, so I watched myself say it back and I feel like I'm getting confused with what I edited and thinking that I might have already said. <sighs> anyway, um, on my laptop I had very, very crucial evidence of my contact with the person who's sentencing just got pushed and he was posing as a man named Jonathan to both my agent at the time and myself. They all had fucking aliases. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, Teddy, I knew him as Teddy, which that's, his name's Theodore Teddy. Um, Andre, he told me his name was Dre, so. But like, as far as like communicating um, via text, email, phone call, well, I didn't handle any phone calls. It was always, someone named Jonathan who was doing like booking it doesn't matter we'll I'll, we'll get into it later but the point is like this is it was so important because I won't get to be a part of sentencing I wouldn't be able to had it not been confirmed that I did have contact with him and I was actually not even the one to figure this out it's not like I can just like you know find an old iPhone or go back somewhere in screenshot it's so not that simple even like forensics back in january when this sentencing was supposed to happen forensics was like we will look through all the files from that night and you know see if they can like pick up on his voice or whatever and they were not able to do that which like i i know he was fucking there okay the thing is like i do remember him being like outside on the patio with the makeup artist most of the time whatever i'm <sighs> sucks it's just an absolute mess and anyway without like that proof if i go and am a part of that it, i could like potentially ruin it for the other girls involved because it's like how am i gonna read my statement when like it hasn't been proven confirmed that i had communication with aka jonathan because he's saying that he was not there that night and literally because what happened to me was different than a most of the other girls. It actually really does matter and it will affect his sentencing. Like I will affect his sentencing. I will affect, yeah, God. I don't know how I was so much more composed the first time I did this, but just anyway, those years of getting myself to try and put together a video, edit it, film like updates in between the amount of times. Finding the most obscure receipts, having to literally contact Yahoo because I don't even have a Yahoo email anymore. And like initially the communication between my agent at the time and these people was all, um, I had another external hard drive, which I do believe I still have, not that it really matters because they already have this footage, but a lot of obscure receipts. Tracked down the hospital in San Diego that had like my toxicology report and that, from 2017, like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like all of that's gone. And the, just the fact that I couldn't even talk about the case until 2022 because we weren't allowed to. And you know, that was torture, especially in the beginning because people just assumed that I willingly did that. And then once like, we could speak about it, not not even freely, like there's a lot of things that we couldn't say and like I pro probably still can't say, well there's definitely things I still can't say, but like my PTSD was so bad in 2023 and since then that like I cannot get myself to really work on finishing the video that I've been wanting to put out and people ask me, I'm not kidding, daily, especially on OnlyFans. I don't, I can't even look at my Instagram DM requests anymore. I still get sent screenshots. It's, I would love to just be able to have like a whole concise with evidence cause there's gonna be dumb fucks that like don't believe things. I would love to just have that out there but like I haven't been able to get myself to work on it just cause of my mental state. Um, there's a documentary with a streaming service that initially I turned down because it was supposed to be filming earlier and I might end up being part of it if I can get like my video out first because I would like to have like my full story told by myself. I don't know, we'll see. Um, there's still three more people not yet sentenced and I get updates, updates from like the FBI victim notification probably three times a week-ish about like the status of the inmates and when I'm 
talked about this a week ago. I said the day that this all happened, the day like before my shit got stolen, earlier that day I had gotten an email saying that Teddy, can I share this? I don't, I think it's fine, whatever. Teddy, AKA Theodore, AKA the videographer, AKA the man who witnessed me being drugged, me being assaulted, raped, tortured, uh, was one of the two people that tackled me when I tried to run. Um, I had gotten an email earlier that day that his release date had been moved up yet again. Cause initially I, I want to say it was like 2036 or something. And then I keep, I kept, I just keep getting fucking emails. Like his, just to let you know, his release date has been moved to this day and he's held at this prison. And that day I had gotten an email that he was going to be released in 2026. And to me, that scared the fuck out of me. I was like, that is so soon. Two days after I filmed that, I get an email. I'll put it in here. Essentially, he's being moved to a halfway house for a year and then he's just free. He's being moved like in less than a month. And like not to mention Andre only getting 20 years because what? <sighs> and it's probably gonna be less than that. And um, I guess, I mean, we're pretty sure that Pratt is gonna have life, you know, but um, damn. The Andre shit scared if you don't know he's was the performer <sighs> and he's the one that does orchestrates a lot of the blackmail and sending the videos to family for me it just so happened that like the day that they came out someone was like that's Annie Mitch so she's on YouTube I like immediately changed my name to Annalise that's why I've only gone by Annalise since that happened like I was always Annie before that um I say that to say that when I realized that I lost all of that, I was unfortunately unable to stop the PTSD attack that followed. And god damn, um, I guess there's gonna be a, I've been filming for 45 minutes and I feel like I filmed that long yesterday, which at the, that, that means I should be done because I filmed an hour and a half the first time, but I'm not done. I haven't even fucking talked about I'm gonna finish this tomorrow and get it up as soon as I can. My heart is already beating out of my chest just setting my phone there to finish this. Okay, I just had to go back and look at the last thing I said that I was unfortunately unable to stop the PTSD attack that was to follow. Um, this tank top is like way too big. And it felt similar to other times but also different i it was like i wasn't in my airbnb i was back in that hotel room which that's not uncommon like if i have flashbacks that's usually how it goes only like this time along with like the rape and everything else that was happening i was seeing feeling whatever like flashes of me in court like from above in the same courtroom naked for some reason but mostly empty-handed like i didn't have all of my everything that i need for court and i'm like i'm seeing that while i'm in this P while i'm having this ptsd episode i don't really know how to explain it other than it's it's a really like a mix of things it's not just like a flashback it's not just like i'm derealized it's not it's everything combined so i don't really know how to explain that but and then there's like this also like another part of my brain at the same time god even this is like making me thinking about like having to continue to explain to every romantic partner that i have the rest of my life which like this last time i thought it would hopefully be the last time that i had to go through like someone getting to learn whatever anyway having to explain like to the next partner why at 26 years old I decided to start an OnlyFans but that I haven't filmed for over two years. I did that so that when people googled me they would be more likely to see things that I filmed consensually with a boyfriend or by myself than what you were seeing from 2017 to 2020 and that I needed to make money and that my college degrees were essentially useless and not just PTSD but like my chronic illness and autoimmune issues that all were worsened by this a few of them only appeared after this were literally running my life and that's like aside from the ptsd 
in one of the videos where I talk about the actual situation, maybe I'll read like one of my victim impact statements and how it impacted me because I guess this is totally kind of a side note from me talking about the moment, but something that is a big part of living a fulfilling life, which you don't necessarily think about all the time, is contributing to society in a positive way. Not that I can't do that or that I don't do that. I know that I do, but there is something about like, like when I would have to explain why I started OnlyFans and certain people would be like, well, that doesn't make sense, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but I can't go and get a job that I'm qualified for. And I, we as humans, ha and whatever. <laughs> I'll save that for the video, I guess. Anyway, so luckily, my partners in the past, except one, well, two, but one of them met like right after this all happened and he understood what happened, but we, like, he was kind of too young to like, I don't know. And then the other one was just a fucking asshole that would sometimes pull up the videos when he was drunk and try to get me to watch them, which I was highly advised not to do. There was a point when I was doing EMDR that we thought maybe at some point we would get to a place where we would, that would be a part of it, but I could never get there. So anyway, moving on. Um, luckily, you know, I, at least my previous two partners have been understanding and maybe a lot of that is because that's, because now there's people, they're locked up and there's so much information out there about what happened and there wasn't before, which sucks because it's like, sucks that the people before them couldn't have taken my word and also just like my behavior. <sighs> Um, past two partners have understood and accepted that I did literally what I had to do to survive and you know even my Mormon parents understand which is crazy but the point is I was stuck in this flashback for god knows how long maybe three hours I don't I really don't know then I was like out of it but still fully dissociated and like derealized looking at myself I can't it's like I can't remember but I I remember the feelings that I was having which were the inability to even process the realization that all of the small amounts of strength that I've found in myself over the years in spurts <laughs> and I, th I, th I still not am not even at a point where I'm able to like call it strength but at least take action with some things just was all for nothing and that I won't ever get justice you know let alone restitution which I just, I'll never get to do the thing that will take away the constant fluttering in my chest, which is constant. And then like in times like right now, it's like, I feel like I can't breathe. It, it, I'll never get to do the thing that will change the fact that I get two hours of sleep a night since this happened. It started with a fear of going to sleep because I knew I would have horrendous and vivid nightmares and also like would wake up amidst flashbacks so it started out as like a fear so then i was like okay i'm staying awake i'm not gonna go to sleep and then i don't know at which point it turned to like maybe for the past four years it's like i just know like around 5 a.m i'll go to sleep for two hours but i'll be so productive like i'll be working up until 5 a.m and it's not out of fear of going to sleep anymore it's like that's what my body has gotten used to and i will have like a crash once a month probably where i sleep a normal amount of time for a night but like yeah it's horrible yeah just the list goes on of things that won't be able to change since what happened in 2017 and I'll, I'll never get to put out the video the videos that I spent years on and also something happened this year not just one thing from well the first incident in March so but I would say from March to May and then even still, I think my storage unit was broken into in June, so whatever. But mainly from March to May, and mainly all of March and all of April um, this year. That um, that also relies on evidence on that laptop. And I also was working on a video for that, um, not just to tell my story and like talk about what happened, but more specifically to warn people, specifically women, about a very elaborate scheme i don't actually know what word i would use elaborate scheme i guess um involving gangs wealthy individuals powerful individuals i'll just leave it at that in southern california and i i'd spent months working on that and 
I, I think the thing is also with that, it's so recent that it like just kind of compounded and furthered my horrendous mental state that night. Anyway, so I don't even remember probably 3 a.m. until waking up later the next day, like around 10 a.m. Um, but I, and I do know that like when I woke up, yes, I still felt like immense sadness and grief and was still trying to come to terms with everything that I just said. Um, my laptop being gone and, you know, I'm still not doing the best. Like I said, it's been a week since I filmed the last clip and still haven't been reached out to. I've been, like, looking, like, local listings and it doesn't, I don't know. And then just, like, literally every day there will be, there will be something where I'm like, shit, I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that. I don't have that. Because, like, everything that I've been living with was taken and just realizing like I swear like it's every day I will be realizing things that I'm don't have and I'm like shit and so that's been a whole process like I still don't even have like a new license like another thing that uh, causes me a lot of pain with this is you know after this happened a day after this happened my dad even you know cried for me and as my dad and knowing that these things were going to just were so important to me and they were going to bring me the peace and hopefully like help me honestly not be living in a semi-constant hell for several years um then specifically with what happened this year he has been the one he was the one helping me with it and eventually in recent months helping me hire like private investigator because fuck the fucking police dude and the fact that ugh, every police experience i've ever had has been horrendous and the fact that one person could say something to them and then they would just discredit my story and then things kept happening and so and i was just too scared to go to them and then having to figure out a way to Anyway, he was the one that was with me through all that and he just was letting me know that he's broken for me and that the evidence is gone and, well, not gone, but stolen and somewhere. Or maybe they, that person like fully wiped the computer and sold it, who knows. Honestly, I hope that whomever stole my wagon really needed all the things that were in there, except for the laptop. I mean, with the amount of skincare that was in there they're gonna have glass skin that's for sure the amount of groceries they're gonna eat good they'll have clothes they'll have really nice ca like cameras jewelry uh honestly if i could just have my laptop and ideally my baby's ashes uh i would ha just hand them the rest of the thing well they already have them but you know let them keep the rest of the things with a smile and fucking go sell that shit and put a down payment on a house because <sighs> i just need that damn laptop oh and by the way you're probably like don't you know how to find my iphone find my mac whatever the thing about that is that that laptop was a gift um for christmas last year and between march and may there was a point where i thought that still don't know actually but i thought that perhaps Allegedly, the person that gifted me the laptop could be involved with the horrible things that were happening to me in those months. And a large part of it was, I mean, okay, this isn't, this wasn't the situation, but let's just say I had a stalker. Obviously, you wouldn't want your stalker to know where your location is, right? Like, you wouldn't want them to just have that. That wasn't the situation, but I wouldn't want any one associated with what was happening to me to potentially have my location and i thought if this person had given me the laptop there's a chance that i mean yeah i i opened it but did i i mean i just took it out of the box which like it's already you don't have to like take off plastic like you just you know like there is a there is a chance you know i'm just doing anything at that point to like try and be safe after what happened and yeah i guess there was a chance that it, since that person bought it they could have done something and then they could perhaps have access to my location point is i just turned off find my on that laptop i have it on my phones my airpods i wish they could i wish my airpods like i wish they could have taken my airpods you know i never set it up on my ipad because i was like 
I don't really care. Anyway, back to whatever I posted that night. I think I already said that I actually don't know because I must have deleted them before deactivating, but you know, couldn't tell you. Annalise was not home. And it's weird because normally during like flashbacks or other such bodily reactions, I shut down, just kind of freeze. Like I'm not one to have breakdowns externally. Like, yeah, you'll be able to tell something's wrong with me, but you know what I mean. I'm not like smashing things and whatever. So anyway, my point is like, I normally am just frozen and like fetal position. So like, let alone posting online, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> it is what it is. And so I would say the purpose of this video, although I guess there were kind of a few. One was to tell a story of my things being stolen. Two was to explain, give a backstory as to why I posted what I did. Because you know, I had people messaging me, a lot of people, and even like in my real life at the beginning before I cleared up the misconception being like, there's some materials, we can replace them, calm down. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't give a fuck about the materials. But it did kind of take me explaining a bit of the backstory more than I wanted to though, I will say. In my, my second part, <laughs> the second day that I filmed, I didn't plan to go that much into it. I didn't go that much into it the first time I filmed this video, whatever. But I have gathered that I alluded to just wanting to die. And also I had texted a, a few close friends of like the same thing. So that I do know. Um, so I guess the reason for this video, aside from, you know, just wanting to be open about things, is because, you know, the amount of fucking love I received after that, it was just very touching. And the reason that I filmed this update, like, what, three weeks ago now, almost? And I wanted to get it up right away so I could be like, not to worry, I am not suicidal, I do not want to die. I was having, I keep saying this, but like, for lack of a better term a PTSD attack episode and they don't happen that often especially to that extent and that was I guess the reason for me posting that it's like I literally wasn't home um and then also to add just like another purpose it's getting so dark why don't it's like the same time every time I start recording this if you have PTSD and you suffer from you know the myriad of horrendous symptoms that come along with it I just also I want to say that it's not shameful your nervous system responding to perceived threat is quite literally out of your control. And look, take it from someone who has done all of the therapy, all of the holistic healing, Ayurvedic medicine, breath work, meditation, using my degree in a way that I didn't think I would have to use it, which i.e. to have the knowledge to utilize like specific modalities of healing and being consistent with that for years and years. Like take it from someone that's done that and I still have the these big blowout moments, whatever you want to call it, as I did the other, I was going to say the other night because the, at the time that's what it was, but you know, a couple weeks ago. And aside from that, I still suffer from a lot of physiological distress on like the somatic side, not just autoimmune disorders and chronic illness, but like the, the hypervigilance that doesn't turn off and just the physical pain and not to mention psychologically, like the panic attacks, the anxiety, the freezing. There was a point where I was like, it's so weird how like all of my relationships before this happened, I wasn't like in this pattern that I've been in specifically like the one real adult long-term relationship I was in for three years before this happened. Super healthy, amazing, great. And then like since then, they've all followed a very similar pattern. And it's like, oh, I am just very much prone to tolerating abuse and not just that, but like doing the most to prove my worth to the person that I'm with, even if they're shitty. I've always been like, it's just so weird. It's like, how, how did I regress? And I'm like, why do I keep choosing this? It's just another thing that it's affected in my life. Um, and so I just wanted to say that like, even if you do all of the right things to heal, doesn't mean that you're not still gonna struggle. And our nervous systems are just like such delicate creatures. And it can literally be one thing that throws like a wrench into all of the progress or you know the place that you're at in that moment maybe you're in a really good place and you have been for a few months and then it just takes one thing and it's like it, personally it still shocks me every time because I, I feel like I should be able to handle certain things and and most people don't have the resources or the ability or even like the knowledge of the resources that they should be using or could be using to do all of the things so like it makes it even less shameful if you're feeling overtaken by your illness 
you know, fuck, I don't even, I don't do as much as I should. I mean, I probably should like exercise more, eat a vegetable. That's not even, that's not PTSD. That's just like general health, but I'm sure it would help. Yeah, whether it's PTSD or depression or borderline or besides narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, low key, I can't help you, sorry. Um, just know that it's not shameful. And everyone is still like, mental health matters until the scary and sometimes debilitating symptoms present themselves and then it's like, she's crazy, he's crazy, they're doing it for attention. Stop that shit. But like I said, I received an outpouring of love and support from you guys. So I'm more just like speaking to the masses of like, stop that shit. And even, all you guys saw was just like me being like, fuck, my life is over. I should probably just like, and you still like sent so much love. <laughs> you know, in fact, the only nasty message I received was someone that I actually know in real life. A text saying that um, I need help way worse than he could imagine. The text is on that phone. It was like, no one's gonna bring you home to mom. What did me posting on my story have anything to do with you? That person's a different story for a different day, let me tell you. Like, first of all, who asked you? Um, <laughs> second of all, aren't you a doctor? Like, I know you're not a psych, but I do know that we learn a lot about the brain, including psychiatric conditions in med school. And we also learn about psychology and psychiatry in our clinical years. And I'm just saying, that's a little bit weird to text someone and say something like that as a doctor. Hmm. So anyway, oh, I wrote on this thing. That's my little huge statement about my posts from like 36 hours ago. Well, it's now been weeks so i'm okay i don't care but look this wasn't about like the material possessions being stolen you know like i've reiterated and even still obviously having feelings about it all i can also look back and understand why i was triggered into oblivion and if i hadn't posted on instagram during that time i probably wouldn't have made this video and said all of this but like i don't know i felt the need to because like this is real life and I don't think people talk about this shit enough. Like, yes, people recently are saying like, I'm so glad like mental health is being talked about more, but it's like, yeah, yes, it is being talked about more, but I don't know. I guess just not enough and not in a real enough way and not, it's like, yeah, anxiety is more normalized now and people understand it, but do you know how many other <laughs> conditions there are? And then the other thing, is, I don't know, I just felt the need as also someone who like first of all studied it and also lives with it and otherwise has like a very, I have a very positive disposition. I love life and I maintain friendships and relationships and I'm a very hard worker and I do things for other people and blah blah blah. I say that because that doesn't mean that I'm not also like eating sugar cubes and drinking Svedka. You know, we'll use the sugar cubes in Svedka as just like a way to describe that night. Just because I am, what's what's the word that I want to use? You know, functioning quite well a lot of the time and probably someone from the outside, I'm not even probably, I know based on fucking comments that I get that you would not think like maybe he has a fucking brain or like has been through a lot of shit, you know? And it's important, <laughs> just it's important to, to be like, yo, I also eat Sved- I eat Svedka. I also drink Svedka and eat sugar cubes and then I'm stuck in a flashback and I post some crazy shit on Instagram, you know? Like, get you a girl that can do both, okay? Anyway, okay. Love you. Back to our regularly- well, I was gonna say regularly scheduled program. There is no regularly scheduled programming, so um, let's see what happens next. If you made it through this whole video, comment something below and use the white heart emoji.